Hello guys and welcome to today's episode. In this video we will solve the problem by a shovel. As always, I will start with reading the problem to you. Polycarp urgently needs a shovel. He comes to the shop and chooses an appropriate one. The shovel that Polycarp chooses is sold for K birds. Assume that there is an unlimited number of such shovels in the shop. In his pocket, Polycarp has an unlimited number of 10 bird coins and exactly one coin of R birds, with R between 1 and 9. What is the minimum number of shovels Polycarp has to buy so that he can pay for the purchase without any change? It is obvious that he can pay for 10 shovels without any change, by paying the required amount of 10 bird coins and not using the coin of R birds. But perhaps he can buy fewer shovels and pay without any change. Note that Polycarp should buy at least one shovel. Input. The single line of input contains two integers, k and r, with k between 1 and 1000 and r between 1 and 9. k is the price of one shovel and the denomination of the coin in Polycarp's pocket that is different from 10 bur coins is r. Remember that he has an unlimited number of coins in the denomination of 10. That is, Polycarp has enough money to buy any number of shovels. Output. Print the required minimum number of shovels Polycarp has to buy so that he can pay for them without any change. Let's write some notes here down. First of all, the shovel that Polycarp chooses is sold for K birds. So K is the price. Um, he has one special coin. R is the value of special coin. And that's it. So these are the two important informations. And what do we need to find out? Um, we have to check how many shells we need to buy that we can pay the bill without any change. Um, just using the 10 bur coins or using the 10 bur coins and the special coin that we have. Maybe let's go for the examples. I think then it gets pretty clear. Let's start with this one, uh, with the third one. Um, the first value is k, so k is the price for the shovel. The shovel costs um, 15 birds and he has a special coin the um, with r2, so the value of the special coin is 2. Now if he buys two shovels then he has to pay 30 birds and therefore he can just use three of the 10 bird coins and can pay it without uh, getting any change. Let's go to the second example. There um, the price is 237. He has a 7 bird coin as a special coin. Um, when he buys one shovel then um, he has to or he can pay it with 23 10 bird coins and just use his one 7 bird coin. The same for um, the first one, just with higher numbers. So here we have um, the description. In the first example, Polycarp can buy 9 shovels and pay 9 times 170, so that means um, 1053 birds. Indeed, he can pay this sum by using 10 bur coins, of course, so 105 10 bur coins, and one 3 bur coin. He can't buy fewer shovels without any change. I would say let's start with um, writing our test cases. Therefore, we need our structure of uh, our function that we will use. So we have our function, and this function takes two uh, integer values. This is on the first hand side k and r. Now, um, what we want to do is to check if we can buy less than 10 shovels to get this done that we don't get any change back with the just using our 10 bull coins um, or the 10 bull coins and the special coins. 
that means we need a for loop for i in range we start with one and go up to 10 um, so we need to write here an 11 and then we check if i times k so that means the price we have to pay times the uh, number of shovels so we start with one modulo 10 is zero um, if you don't know what modular here is um, modular is dividing with the rest that means for example if we have uh, 30 and divide 30 by 10 we don't have any rest because um, yeah 3 times 10 is 30 um, if we have for example 15 um, modulo 10 then uh, the rest is 5 and we will get 5 here so this is the first part when we can just use the 10 barrel coin to don't get any change or in the other case if i times k modulo 10 is equal to r that means when we can get the rest uh, we have to pay just with using our r coin if this is the case then um, we will return i and therefore we can just break in this loop and return i sorry guys i was uh so in in writing uh, my code down uh, i just forget uh forgot to wrote my test cases we will just write them now um, i just have to mention one thing you can see that my code here uh, is underlined with a view, uh, blue curly wave that's a new plugin I'm using for VS Code. Um, it's called Sorcery and it's pretty interesting. Um, Sorcery is a tool that helps you to get good quality code or a good um, Python way code and helps you to refactor your code. And if I go to this line, then you can see that they tell me I should refactor my function and I could replace my multiple comparisons of same variable with in operator. So they tell me this is my structure and they would change it in this way. And that's pretty nice because the code is much cleaner and it's super easy. And um, this plugin really helps to improve your code quality. Um, either if you're just starting or if you have uh, more experience in programming. Um, I will link you a video on how to install Sorcery that you can use it too. Now you can easily say quick fix and it's just changed. But let's get back to write our uh, test cases that we can see if this implementation is correct. Therefore, we write the test cases. Let's save it and start pytest for our file and we see that it's passed let's go and take this code and submit it to codeforce we have to adapt a few things once again we don't want to return i we want to print i and we need to read in our integers we get a single line so we take k and r we tuple 
and want to um, take our input and split our input when the space is coming here. So we can just remove the split function. Um, therefore, we get a list, a list with two um, strings. And now we want to transform these strings into integers. So we want to use the int function to cast them. And we will use the map function um, to go through, uh, to go to every element in the list and use the int function. Let's just make some press here. That should be it. Let's look at it again. If everything's all right, input, we split it. Yeah. So let's submit and see what happens. And we can see that our solution was accepted. Let's go back once again to the code and maybe to this code here too. I can't see it. Um, I'll just make it big one time. Okay. Interesting parts in here is maybe this construct where you um, take your input, you split it um, at a space and cast every item that you've split to an integer with your map. And the more interesting part, the coding part here, um, is first of all, okay, we have a range. We start with one and want to go up to 10. Um, therefore, we need to write here an 11 because 11 then is not included. Uh, and the modulo function um, where we see if we have any, any rest when we divide by this value. And the nice structure that Sorcery gave me here that I can check if my result here is in the values. So it's either value 0 or R. That's it for today. Um, thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments, any questions, just let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, I would appreciate if you give it a like. And to not miss any videos of me, just subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and goodbye.